Hello my friends, I'm Gene Delasala, President of Audioholics. Today I'd like to do a video discussing how to channel balance your speakers using an SPL meter. Now this is a basic video, so the more advanced viewers of our channel might want to check out some of our, vid our videos that go into more detail about how to set up your system. But for those of us that like to do the old-fashioned way of balancing our channels, this little device very useful, my friends. Mine is an old analog SPL meter from Radio Shack. Now you might still be able to find some of these um, on Amazon or whatever websites that sell them. A lot of them are digital. Um, I do prefer the analog one just because you can see the meter and it's you know the response of it is a little bit quicker, uh, more instantaneous. But this is a very useful tool. Everybody should have one. Even though today we have auto setup with auto equalization and you, have, you put the microphone in your sweet spot and it does all your channel trims and your delays and EQ, that's all well and good. But you know what? This is still a tell-all and this is still a reliable tool to use and to verify the auto setup because auto setup is rarely ever even close to being perfect. Now the auto setup routines are pretty good at getting channel levels right, but you know, Every now and then, I like to check the calibration of my system maybe every every six months or two or three times a year because you never know if somebody messes with the channel trims when they're changing something on the remote, a kid, or you know the cleaning lady, you name it. It's so easy for your system to get out of balance. So it's always good to spot check. So I figured it'd be a good idea to not only tell you about how these meters work, but also to show you how to properly use them so you can get your channel balances better in your system because your channel trims are essential to getting the right balance in your surround sound to creating a very realistic field and um, I think it's time that we talk about that so we have here it's a realistic sound pressure level meter analog like I said the first thing you want to do is you want to turn it on check the battery level now mine says it's at about half battery so it's still good then you want to set your meter to, I would set it for like 70 dB. You set the range, set it to 70 dB. Now there's two weighting functions, there's A weighting and C weighting. Now some of the more advanced meters have B weighting and, and other types of weighting, but let's just stick with this. A weighting is typically used for noise measurements. And you look at stuff like OSHA, they give you A weighted dB SPL of how loud something can be before it damages your hearing. The problem with using A-weighted in a home theater environment is it's very bandwidth limited. It filters out the lows, it filters out the highs. It's not a representation of what your speakers are producing and what you're hearing at your listening chair. So set that to C-weighted. Now we also have a response time that's slow and fast. Fast is usually a 125 millisecond uh, period. Slow is a one second period. Personally, I like to use slow because it, it, it gives you a better average. It slows the meter down. It, gets, it lets you see a more steady state measurement between each speaker. Because if you leave it on fast, especially for when you're testing the bass levels, you're gonna see that mo meter moving like crazy. You're not gonna be able to decipher what the actual level is. So why don't we show you now how to channel, ba channel balance your system. I'm gonna turn my system on and we'll take a look and I'll show you exactly what's going on here. Okay guys, so I'm in the on-screen menu of my Denon AVP processor. You go to Manual Setup, go to Speaker Setup, now you go to Channel Levels. Now in Mode you have Manual and Auto. If you leave it on Auto, it's going to basically sweep through each speaker every couple of seconds. That may not be enough time for you to properly set level. So personally I use Manual, it just gives me enough time, no stress, no worries. Let's go to Start. And now what you're hearing is a pink noise generation coming from my front left speaker. So normally you would want to put your, your SPL meter on a tripod. You'd want to have it somewhere that it's level and it's about ear level, seated ear level position. And you start out in your money seat. So in my case I've got two rows of chairs. What I typically do is I try to get the best average between those two rows. So I go about a foot behind the front row. And in this case, I turn, I push down my, um, my chairs. That way they're not blocking the microphone in any way. So I'm going to basically hold the microphone here. Pretend my arm is the tripod, okay? And what I wanted to tell you guys is you, you might not hear me as well. Uh, so I turned off the test tones for now. Um, 
pay attention to the master volume level when you start your pink noise. In my case, uh, as soon as when I hit the pink noise, the master volume level goes to zero dB. So this is a, a relative volume scale. What you're going to find is if I calibrate my system to 75 dB, which is pretty much the standard for home theater, you're going to have you're going to hit reference levels when your master volume is set for zero dB, which is pretty loud because you get peaks of over 105 dB. So you probably wouldn't normally listen that loud. And to be honest with you, when I watch a movie in here, I'm probably listening at minus 10, sometimes even lower, depending on if the wife is here. So anyways, I'm going to re-engage the test tones. I know it's going to get noisy, but I just want to go through this process with you. So pretend my arm is the tripod again. It's in my sweet spot. And let's go. Let's have a rip. And there's nothing. I think I just got out of the on-screen display. Apologize for that. You can tell that this is live. It's not rehearsed. Okay, there we go. So that's the front left speaker. And it's at 76 dB right now. I'm just going to lower the master volume level. Okay, I'm at 75 dB. And obviously you don't want to be talking when you're doing this because it messes with the meter. You want to have total silence in the room. The only thing you want to hear in your room is the speaker that's playing the pink noise. So my front left speaker is at 75 dB. Let's check the center channel. Now the center channel, I have about a dB hot. I do that deliberately because people always complain they can't hear the voice dialogue. And quite frankly, it's always better to have the center slightly louder than the rest if you can, especially if you have a two row um, theater like I do for the back row of people. They want to hear the center channel dialogue better. Then we go to the front right. Again, that's balanced. Now we go to the surround right. That's the speaker on my sidewall here. Now, obviously, I've got two rows of chairs, so the front row is going to be a little low. The back row is going to be a little high. I try to get a best fits between the two. Go out a surround back right. Surround back left. Surround left. That's the speaker you're seeing right now. And now I've got, I've actually got five subwoofers in here. I know it's crazy. All my amps are turning on right now. So I've got my subwoofer signal split between subwoofer left and subwoofer right. And what you'd want to do, especially if you just have one subwoofer, you're just going to have one calibration here. You want to set it so that way um, you're getting about the same level for all of your channels, including your subwoofer channel. And since this is a, 0 dB reference when you're set for 70. I, I probably didn't explain that too well. Let me go over that real quick. Okay, so we have the, the SPL meter set for 70 dB. So at 0, that's actually 70. So in this case, we're at 76 because we're at plus 6 dB. So when you're setting your subwoofer level, you pretty much want to set all your channel trims are about the same. But if you're an advanced user and you've EQ'd your subwoofer channel so it's the base is flat and it's not too peaky, you could crank the sub up three, four, sometimes even five dB higher than the rest of the channels, and it won't sound too bassy or too boomy. It all really depends on how well you have the bass integrated in your system, and if you're using multi-sub, so that way all your chairs have good bass. So we've got the channel trims all set up. I'm going to turn that off. And that's it, guys. I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I always like to use an SPL meter even after the calibration is done, whether it's auto EQ or someone else has done it. I'm just, I'm very meticulous about getting my channel trims right. And you should be too, because it really makes a world of difference. This kind of calibration literally takes minutes. And I can't tell you how many people's homes I've been to where they didn't even do any channel, channel balances at all. They just left everything at zero dB, which was the default in the on-screen setup. And please don't do that guys. Go, in fact, when you're done with this video, please go check your channel trims, get your SPL meter, do what I said in the video, give us comments below, let us know how out of whack your system was, or let us know how, how accurate, and how meticulous you are getting all your channel trims balanced. Well, that's it, guys. Please share the video if you like it, comment below, and until next time, keep listening and listen balanced.